Hello and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining in with Exclusive Networks and F5. Think app security first, advanced threats require an advanced WAF. Uh, to start with today, firstly, we will have Faris for our F5 and a manager from Exclusive Networks Middle East that will talk about uh, app security, followed by Serge, our technical solutions manager at Exclusive Networks that give us a deep dive. For the housekeeping rules, uh, all attendees will be on mute. Uh, we encourage all our attendees to please use the chat option to ask us questions, and questions will be taken care at the end of the webinar. We will wait for another five minutes to allow others to join in as well, and we will start at 11.05. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for waiting. Uh, we will start with uh, Faris right now, who will give us uh, insight on the advanced security. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, my name is Faris, and I'm looking after the F5 business and exclusive networks. Uh, just before we start, please allow me to reiterate that today's session is focusing on the advanced WAF and how it will protect your business applications and business assets. Uh, this session to be delivered by, uh, driven by my colleague Serge. So uh, before that, please allow me to spare a few minutes with me to brief you on the F5 promising vision toward the adaptive uh, applications in a hope to bring some light uh, on, on the comprehensive F5 portfolio and how it can help you with your digital transformation journey. So let's uh, let's just start with that. If we if we're gonna think of it, it's 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 not hidden that the pandemic had changed the way we consume applications and forced companies to transform to stay relevant. Actually, a new study had showed that uh, COVID had shortened the digital tra transformation span for most of the companies 
from all across the industries from six years to, to, to only three months or sometimes less, and this is massive change. On the other hand, with all these applications and all these tools in front and in, 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 uh, with, the, and, and with the fingertips of uh, our, uh, your customers and your consumers, uh, the, the, the challenge from consumers and the push where they expect a rich experience and the rich user experience demand had raised every day to stay relevant and compete in that market. And this also put a big pressure into the IT organizations to deliver these rich digital experiences. So let's have you know, some, some just ideas. In addition to the soft challenges, in addition to the soft challenges of lack of budgets, lack of resources, uh, internet procurement and long cycles of procurement, there is other core challenges, including the complex applications portfolios nowadays with, uh, 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 within the organization. So some, some applications are uh, on the cloud. Some other applications are on-prem. Some other applications are right on the edge. So there is the segregation between all these uh, applications in place. And managing this complex portfolio is quite difficult as well. Another additional uh, uh, thing is definitely the security uh, exposure with 300% increase in attacks on the application side. So over definitely that was over the past two years. So you need to protect the new applications and you need to protect the old applications and all other applications. If we also think about the visibility over the digital experience journey, we might have some visibilities in certain areas of that delivery, but having a comprehensive uh, uh, 360 view over the delivery of the digital experience can be a little bit uh, uh, quite challenging nowadays. Uh, so let's have just some visuals, and uh, probably it's going to be easier for us to, to grasp. So when we think about the digital experience, we are talking about delivering a blend of traditional uh, applications, traditional services, uh, and, and the mix of modern service. So if we have one user uh, requesting uh, some service from your website or from your mo mobile app, probably this delivery of service is happening from some traditional monolithic applications and the stitch from uh, modern applications that is on the cloud or containerized environments or, or on the edge. It looks easy when we look at it here uh, on, on the slide, but actually it is quite difficult to do uh, this uh, uh, stitching, especially these two. I mean, here it's, it looks like two, but it can be multiple cloud. It can be a multi-cloud. It, uh, it can be multiple environments. These environments are talking different languages. These environments, whatever works in terms of security for the applications of the traditional and monolithic, monolithic applications, is not necessarily what works for the containerized environments. The application delivery concepts and techniques or the on-premise is quite different than it is on the cloud or on the edge. Even if you're going to look into the visibility, you will not, it's less likely to have a full comprehensive visibility over everything happening. So with all these factors in place, it is quite challenging to deliver and to stitch a seamless digital experience right to the end user directly from us. So let me just brief the challenge here. The challenge is your customers, they demand a high quality digital experiences every day. Otherwise, they are planning to move and they can move with a finger. I mean, they can just, with your applications, uh, they can switch, they have the option to do that. But the challenge we have is complex environments, vulnerabilities, lack of resources. You, you know, we have a lot of challenges to deliver these digital experiences to them. So what's the solution here? So if I came up with a very positive approach to address the challenge of the multi-cloud and multi-platforms uh, digital uh, experience delivery. And if I is the only company definitely in my opinion, is the only company that can bridge the gap across multiple environments and deliver a superior a digital experience. So how, how they are doing that? Uh, with, with, with a lot of acquisitions in place, F5 managed to address the area of security as an example. So, so can address the area of securing the monolithic applications and whatever you have on-prem using uh, technologies like the WAF, AWAF, ASM and, and others, DDoS and others. While on the cloud, it has uh, technologies like Nginx to, to help secure your microservices, 
it has uh, technologies like API gateways to help deliver these services as well. So also in the area of application delivery and application security, F5 has covered both the traditional and modern applications together. This, all these factors, all these factors together help to have more automation into uh, the digital experience uh, delivery because it's under one umbrella of F5 that can have, uh, you know, and an, uh, 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 you know, it, it will have a harmony somehow to deliver this seamless digital experience. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm reaching to my to my final note here. Uh, F5 is the only company with a complete vision when it comes to delivering digital experiences from across multiple environments or multiple cloud environments. If you think of it, we have the big IP family to simplify the traditional uh, monolithic application delivery. We have the Nginx, and trust me, this is a big acquisition happening. This Nginx is powering up 450 million websites worldwide and, and powering up 70% of the uh, heavy web applications in the world to help deliver modern applications at a scale. Security, we have a massive security portfolio. I say massive because if you combine all the security products and F5 under one company, you will find out that this company is among the top three companies in the world. And finally, we have, uh, I would say, the, the, the best and the strongest and the most powerful AI engine. And this AI engine, with this AI engine in place, sky is the limit, definitely. Uh, you know, with that said, I'm, uh, I would like to really thank you all for, for attending. Thank you for joining. Uh, leaving the mic to uh, my colleague and my friend, uh, Serge Gannon, to take over the uh, AWA presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Faris, for that wonderful presentation. We have Serge now, uh, who will fill us in more. Hello, Ryan, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. OK. Uh, thank you, Faris, for uh, the fruitful session. It was really uh, a good, informative session and uh, a really nice introduction for our topic now, which is the uh, advanced web. Um, let me introduce myself first. My name is Serge Ghanem, and I'm Technical Solutions Manager at Exclusive Networks Middle East. And uh, in today's session, we will cover uh, why advanced applications threats require an advanced WAF security solution. And as, uh, uh, as my colleague Faris mentioned in his introduction, uh, virtually every organization is in the middle of the digital transformation and it has a lot of challenges obviously and the first one the main concern is the sensitive data their sensitive data where half of the apps have a lot of vulnerabilities when they are being created or developed fast in addition to that there is a cloud move where infrastructure does not move with with us or with you guys and um, uh, applications are not being protected properly on the cloud and the third concern, and it's uh, now it's a big challenge, uh, which is the APIs, the machine-to-machine -machine interaction, which unlocks new business models for increased efficiency. These APIs are also need, uh, or also need protection, in uh, um, uh, as traditional controls often can be applied uh, uh, by uh, um, a security solution like AWAF. So, uh, how do we protect? Uh, these apps uh, so and what is the first layer um, uh, of protection so it's obviously the web application firewall solution and why WAF is essential an essential security control first because it can protect against application vulnerabilities the active attacks and can reduce the risk and address compliance obviously not to forget that these apps need to be protected as they are the gateway to the data and the consumer are interacting with your business 
through these apps. Even my colleague Faris mentioned this point. And this is why the necessity to have a strong, robust WAF solution. But before we start to speak about the advanced WAF capabilities of F5, let's have uh, the, 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 uh, or cover the WAF journey of F5, how it started with the big IP ASM, which is the traditional WAF of F5, the ASM end of sale announcement, and uh, we're going to speak about that as well, how, when we are announcing the end of sale. And we'll have a quick recap on the ASM feature, we were, which were carried over and enhanced in the F5 advanced WAF. First, why F5 is ending sale for ASM on the 1st of April 2021. So initially, uh, F5 offered ASM in 2004 which is uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, their WAF portfolio has been expanded significantly over the years, including F5 Advanced WAF, F5 Silver Ma Lion Managed Cloud WAF, uh, uh, F5 Cloud Services Essential App Protect. And since its introduction in 2018, Advanced WAF has been the uh, uh, preferred uh, uh, big IP-based uh, WAF. And the Advanced WAF, uh, this is like a very high uh, explanation now about the advanced WAF, uh, but we're going to dig deeper later on. The advanced WAF provides the entire big IP ASM feature set, set, as well as additional capabilities and add-on options not available in the big IP ASM. And the big IP ASM is just being retired to simplify the, a the F5 uh, application security portfolio and enable our customers to benefit from the expanded feature sets of the uh, advanced WAF. A quick recap on the ASM capabilities and the feature set that they were moved to the uh, advanced WAF. And we're going to see obviously the difference about, between these cap uh, uh, key capabilities and the advanced WAF capabilities. And we're going to see later on the big difference. Um, the first key capability was a signature based protection. Uh, where the ASM can uh, block web attacks by comparing requests to a database of uh, attack signature, for example, protecting against uh, known attacks like um, uh, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, um, uh, buffer overflow. All these are like signature-based uh, protection can be uh, can be protected with a signature-based protection mechanism. Um, the second key feature, which was uh, the basic bot protection. Uh, identification where the ASM challenged the browser client with some JavaScript validation. And another challenge is to compare the request against a database of, of known uh, bot signature, which is like a static way of protecting against bot attacks. And you can see in this screen as well how the event logs of the bot defense in ASM was shown, who was the IP address, how he was doing the bot attacks and why. Um, the third key feature um, was where the ASM can block inbound web application traffic based on an unwanted IP address coming from a specific geolocation or has a bad reputation like uh, crawlers, scanners, scammers, and unknown proxies. Um, the fourth key feature was the session-based protection where the ASM can stop hackers from hijacking or manipulating an already uh, established session with a legitimate user browser. Some of these known attacks here are the brute force and uh, parameter uh, tampering. Um, the fifth key feature was, uh, and still the most important feature for our client, where the F5 ASM was able to build a policy from re, from relearned application traffic and provide a full visibility and reporting into traffic, helping the administrator to decide which traffic needs to be whitelisted or blocked. In addition to that, it can provide a very simple way to handle false positive alerts. And here is a, an event logs where F5 show us in its dashboard how the um, attack signature uh, or the, the, the violation was shown as it's in an attack signature um, uh, and it's detailed as an SQL injection uh, on which parameter, 
like for example you can see on the id and the full details of the request the asm key, uh, key cap capabilities were very strong and robust but the risks are evolving as mentioned as well my colleague uh, faris and hackers are targeting credentials and sensitive data more through advanced web attacks and you can see it around like 3 billion credentials were reported stolen in 2016. Automated attacks are increasing more and more, and 77% of our of the web attacks start from uh, botnets. Plus, the layer seven, uh, the layer seven um, uh, DDoS attack is increasing heavily, and you can see by 47, 43%. And the, when we are speaking about layer seven DDoS, we are speaking about sophisticated, sophisticated DDoS attack when we are under a a layer 7 DDoS attack with uh, an encrypted traffic like uh, the uh, HTTPS. For these reasons, and many more, F5 Networks was the first vendor to initiate and upgrade from its robust traditional WAF known as ASM to the advanced WAF. And here are the top advanced key capabilities of this solution. So we're going to cover now the key capabilities of the F5 advanced WAF. So the first advanced capability is the uh, threat campaign which is which is um, um, an add-on threat intelligence subscription for f5 advanced web uh, this service provides intelligence that contains contextual information uh, about the nature of the uh, and the purpose of the active threat campaign and in, in, in contrast although a web may detect a syntax error in a web application form without threat intelligence, it cannot correlate the singular attack incident as part of a more extensive and sophisticated threat campaign. And here is an example of a threat campaign policy which, which is deployed on an AWAF, which is like, for example, here targeted uh, or which protect against an Apache uh, server, web server. Uh, uh, threat campaign attack or which target as well the Linux um uh, operating system um the second feature which is the advanced uh, second feature of f5 is the advanced bot protection so we have seen the basic bot protection and the sm and here we are seeing the advanced bot protection where the af awav will protect against sophisticated bots and automated browsers by validating the browser capabilities and differentiating between the good bots and malicious bots or even the impersonating bots. And here is a, a, a how simple to configure a bot uh, policy or profile in F5. You can see that uh, we can uh, alarm the trusted bot, uh, the untrusted bot as well, alarm or block them, the suspicious browser, we can challenge them through capture, let malicious block like rate it, limit them or block them. So we can have a full control on the bot attack uh, when it's targeting our application and here is an example of the uh, um, uh, the, the the event logs of the bot uh, attack and how f5 have been able or capable to see the uh, uh, browser masquerading for example bots and you can see it's around 1400 bots being detected on our uh, uh, f5 targeting our uh, uh, application um the third advanced feature is the layer 7 uh, DDoS mitigation, which is as well an advanced DDoS capability in the advanced web, which was a basic capability in uh, the uh, uh, ASM, where the F5 uh, AWAF relies on its artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning capability capabilities to create a baseline based on the continuous monitoring of the backend application health and server stress. This baseline, or what's called auto thresholding, will help to differentiate between the good actor and bad actor and eliminate the false positive alerts while under a layer 7 uh, uh, DDoS attack. And uh, uh, this capability as well will help in the creation, and this is based on the machine learning as well, uh, um, it will help in the creation of the DDoS signatures, or what's called traffic pattern signatures, that might be used later on or saved in the um, database of the advanced WAF and may be later on be used uh, if a new bad actor match, matches the uh, uh, traffic pattern matrix of a previous recorded DDoS traffic 
pattern or traffic signature, which is a very advanced feature in the uh, advanced WAF solution. Uh, the fourth uh, advanced capability is uh, credential stuffing. That will obviously, uh, credential stuffing is a very known now um, security capability, and it's known to protect against attempts to uh, um, authenticate using known leaked stolen credential from the dark web, for example. So uh, when an attempt, uh, so high F5 will work against such kind of attack. So when an attempt of a brute force is detected, credential stuffing uh, suspicious attempts are checked and compared to a known uh, database and stopped from a user account takeover attack. Uh, and here is an example uh, how easy it is to configure this credential stuffing under our brute force uh, uh, um, configuration settings where you can see credential stuffing and it's just a click and it will do all the job. And here is an example of events which mitigated IPs and stolen username from uh, like uh, uh, public IPs or even mitigated username or stolen username which were seen in the event logs uh, as well. Uh, the fifth advanced capability is a really interesting one, which is called as a technology application layer encryption or credential side, uh, credential protection or data safe in the F5 terminology, where the AWAF will protect against the credential theft of the client, uh, sorry, at the client uh, uh, web browser level by deactivating just deactivating the man and the browser malware capabilities like a keylogger or any malware in the browser and it will deactivating it of from stealing the user's credentials or critical inf uh, in, uh, information being uh, uh, in, uh, being typed or uh, like a user input uh, and uh, typed in a user input parameter and here is a way of doing it by the way, this feature, before explaining about it, this feature, whenever it's activated on our F5 AWAF, it will protect or it will always do the, this uh, uh, job that we're going to explain, even if the user has a malware or was, was a victim of a malware or doesn't have a malware in, this, in his browser. So, for example, so now let's consider the user is a victim of a malware in the browser. So user is already infected with a malware and he is requesting to log into his bank account page, which is sitting behind a WAF, uh, uh, the AWAF. So the user, uh, the WAF will send the request to the uh, web application. Uh, the applica web application will respond with the page. And what F5 will do when the data save is activated, it will add an obfuscated code or obfuscated JavaScript plus it will add its public key, okay? And this public key, along with the Java, obfuscated JavaScript and the response page will be sent to the user browser, or here in this case, the victim browser. Obviously, the victim will start to, uh, uh, the malware will run, start to run in order to catch the credential of the victim. And the victim is trying to put his username and password. But since the JavaScript, obfuscated JavaScript is working, it will mask hash encrypt the password uh, uh, or the credentials it can encrypt the username and password it will encrypt the the, the, the password in a way that the uh, the uh, malware uh, or the hacker will not be able to read it or even decrypt it and then obviously the user will try to log in so he's going to submit his username and password f5 with its private key will decrypt the uh, uh, the username and password and will safely allow the user to log into his uh, uh, account or the bank account. So what will happen as well? The malware will be sent to the con uh, its content to the drop zone and the hacker will not be able to decrypt and therefore un unable to use the content or log in through the user uh, name and password of the victim and uh, have access to his let's say bank account. This is a really interesting interesting feature. Uh, last but not least is the uh, sixth uh, advanced capability uh, offered by the uh, AWAF, which uh, which is the uh, API security, which is which provides robust security to modern application or uh, server to server communication, where it's it is very straightforward to create an API security policy through uh, the guided configuration. 
um, uh, by just asking um, uh, our development team or your development team to provide you with a swagger file. A swagger file is the uh, uh, the shape of the API call, how the uh, user or the server will interact with another API to API communication. So this swagger file will have all the input that should be uh, uh, or the parameters, the, the file type, everything that should be in, in an API call targeting our API server. So this Swagger file, once important, uh, um, uh, uh, it will help us in like minutes to create our WAF uh, policy to secure against uh, the API calls or unwanted APIs call targeting our API server or application server. So how these were the top six uh, advanced WAV uh, feature, but now how does ASM compare to the advanced WAV? So advanced WAV, as, as we have seen, offers a super set of ASM features. Additional capabilities, uh, like uh, includes ease of use of uh, 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 enhancement with guided configurations and making, simp uh, making the configuration of the policy of the WAV policy more sim simpler and um, uh, uh, having more dashboards and more visibility on the on the traffic as well um, um, expanded layer 7 ddos capabilities uh, uh, data safe the data safe feature which is the application layer encryption the api protection as well as the threat uh, intelligence add-on option and as you can see now in front of you here is a comparison document that highlights the key advanced WAF and big IP ASM differentiation. So uh, you can have a look at it and see that really nowadays the advanced WAF needs to be considered in our environment instead of staying with a robust traditional A uh, sorry, robust traditional ASM um, of F5. Um, so what are the options or in order to acquire this f5 awaf um, um you need to go with one of the following uh, offerings and e here are three different options the big ip first one is a big ip advanced WAF that can be deployed on hardware or virtual edition platform on-prem or in any public cloud or private cloud infrastructure uh, the uh, second one is the uh, F5 Cloud Managed WAF, which is called as well Silverline, um, that is uh, fully managed by the security experts and the uh, F5 SOC. And then uh, the third option is the F5 Cloud Software as a Service WAF, which is a cloud native software as a service platform for securing in a simple and very fast way your application. To sum up my session, the F5 AWAF advantages will provide your application with a first level of bot protection beyond signature and reputation, an account takeover protection that stop credential theft and abuse, and application layer DDoS protection that adapts to changing apps. With that, I thank you for your time, for listening to the, to the session. Hopefully, it was a fruitful one. Please feel free to write your question in the chat uh, and I'm ready to uh, answer to your question. Thank you. Ryan, Hi, the microphone for thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the session. Uh, yes, we do have a few questions. Uh, first one is, how does F5 ASM manage and reduce false positive and increase detection of true positive? Okay, so uh, the ASM uh, as well as the uh, advanced WAF, so it was previously in, in the ASM, this feature was previously in the ASM, and it was, uh, as I mentioned, moved to the AWAF. Um, to reduce false positive, the um, WAF or the advanced WAF of F5 works in something called positive security model. This positive security model where F5 will learn all the traffic of the application in a dynamic or in manual way, and based on all the learned traffic of the application like parameter, file types, URLs, uh, cookies, it will whitelist them and block against 
all the unwanted traffic. On top of that, it will apply the negative security model, which is based on signature. Plus, the uh, uh, second part, when it comes, this is when it comes to web application protection. When it comes to layer seven DDoS protection, as I mentioned, the behavioral DDoS mitigation will uh, uh, stop all the uh, uh, unwanted or bad actors in a way that the positive security model, sorry, not the positive, the, the, the uh, false positive will be eliminated. Why? Because the behavioral DDoS will check the matrix, 3000 matrix in each packet of a sender and will uh, uh, differentiate it against a baseline or a noto threshold. And based on that, it will decide if this actor is a, a, a good actor or a bad actor and it will reduce in that case or eliminate the false positive in its decision. Thank you. Thank you, Serge. One more question. Uh, what are the F5 channel partner certifications required to deploy and implement ASM and WAF solutions? Okay, so um, first of all, uh, to deploy, uh, or you mean, uh, I, if I understood the question well, is um, what are the level of the enablement in order to be able to uh, uh, implement F5, um, if I understood yeah. well. F5 okay. channel partner certifications and um, uh, put, put. Okay, so, so first of all, uh, from, uh, of course, technical perspective or pre-sales uh, perspective, um, uh, first of all, uh, the, 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 the channel team or the team should create an account uh, for them on, on the F5, on the partner portal, do some accreditation. After that, they can start with the uh, official or uh, attend attend some training, the advanced WAF training, for example, official one, which uh, we deliver at exclusive networks. After the training, they can have a, a study guide um, uh, to start with the first uh, certification, which is the fundamental one, the uh, um, 101. Then after that, the big IP administrator, which is a 201. And after that, they can start with all the F5 modules from AWAF, LTM, all the, no, and AWAF is one of these certification that needs to be done. So at least you need around like uh, three uh, certifications to be able or to be like, uh, yeah, somehow capable of deploying the uh, AWAF solution. I think this question is from a, from a channel uh, partner. So. Uh... And I would like also to reiterate that we are an authorized uh, training center for F5. We definitely can take uh, uh, this request uh, offline as well. Sure. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Any final words from Faris and Serge? I, I really thank you for, for your time, for making the time. Uh, I hope, uh, I really hope that it was an informative session. Uh, Please uh, get in touch with us to know more about the F5 vision, uh, F5 comprehensive portfolio whenever it comes to uh, delivering your applications more secure, delivering your applications faster, and in the best optimized way. I thank you again for, for attending, and thank you, Serge, for the uh, contribution, valuable contribution as usual. Thank you, everyone, thank for you. joining. Uh, if you can see the chat area, we have put in our email IDs. If you would like to get in touch with us on one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, if you have any questions, do feel free to drop them in. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, Serge. Thank you, Faris, and have a good day, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.